Hello friends, welcome to electrical circuits. In this session, we will study about superposition theorem. We will learn the process how to analyze circuit and also practice on numerical based on superposition theorem. Before starting, let's do quick revision. If you missed previous video, click on i button. In previous video, we have gone through Norton's theorem. We had discussed the procedure how to reduce circuit and also practice on numerical based on Norton's theorem. So, without wasting time, let's get started with superposition theorem. Superposition theorem states that in any linear circuits with having more than one source, response across any element can be determined by algebraic sum of response obtained from individual response. Meanwhile, all other sources are supposed to replace with their internal resistance. Friends, here we need to focus on term linear circuit and internal resistance. We are aware about internal resistance of ideal sources. For the ideal voltage source, internal resistance is 0 ohm, while for the current source, it is infinite ohm. Due to this internal resistance, we are shorting voltage source and opening current source in the Thevenin's and Norton's theorem. For understanding this theorem, let's take one example. Consider the given circuit with having two sources. Now, here, we need to find current and voltage across R2. Value of three different resistors are 4 ohm, 2 ohm and 1 ohm respectively. Here, as we know, response of load resistance is algebraic sum of all individual source connected to it. I have taken two sources of 28 volt and 7 volt. Let's start finding response stepwise. In the first step, we are assuming one source and another source are replaced with their internal resistance. Here, I am starting analysis with 28 volt voltage source and another source is sorted. In upcoming step, we will find response of load resistance. It may be found with any circuits analysis technique as per your proficiency. However, here we are going with Kirchhoff's current law. As shown in the circuit diagram, two nodes are represented and nodal equation is as mentioned. After solving this equation, we are getting 4 volt as a load voltage and by using Ohm's law, we are getting 2 ampere as load current. These are the response when only one source is acting. Friends, now we will sort this source and will analyze with another source. Here, circuit is connected with 7 volt battery and other than that source is replaced with their internal resistance. As did earlier, in this step, we need to find response of load resistance. Here also, we are going with Kirchhoff's current law for the circuit solution. After solving these equations, we are getting 4 volt as a load voltage and 2 ampere as a load current. Again, this response could achieve with 7 volt battery only. Now, we calculated individual response. And as suggested in definition, response of load is algebraic sum of all individual response. So here, as presented in table, total voltage drop across load resistance is 8 volt. Likewise, total current flowing through load resistance is 4 ampere. By this method, we can easily find the response of any complicated circuits with having more than one sources. Let's make concept sharper with another example. In this sum, we are going to calculate current across load resistance. This circuit contains three sources, one 5 volt voltage source and two current sources of 5 ampere and 10 ampere respectively. As we have seen earlier, 
response of load is algebraic sum of response by all connected sources. Now we will start with case number 1. In this case only 5 volt is acting. Here other than 5 volt source is replaced by their respective internal resistance. Hence both current source are kept open circuited. Friends, now we need to calculate response of load resistance. From the circuit, it can be seen that all resistance are connected in series. So, current through load resistance is 0.357 MPa. This is only possible while only 5 volt voltage source is connected. In the second case, we are considering 5 ampere current source. So, sources other than 5 ampere are replaced by their respective internal resistance. Hence, in our case, 5 volt voltage source is sorted and 10 ampere current source is open circuited. This circuit can be rearranged as shown here. So here, we can see two parallel combination of resistance are connected with current source. By using current divider rule, current through load resistance could be found. And that is 1.42 Ampere. Friends, here we need to keep in mind that this 1.42 Ampere is flowing while only 5 Ampere current is connected. In the last case, only 10 Ampere current source is on and rest of all are represented with their internal resistance. Here it can be seen that 5 volt voltage source is sorted and 5 ampere current source is kept open. For easy calculation, the circuit can be represented in this way too. So again, two parallel path is connected with 10 ampere current source. By using current divider rule, we can find current and voltage through load resistance. And in this case, it is 2.86 Ampere. After calculation of all individual response, final response could be found by vector addition. And hence, current through load resistance is 4.62 Ampere. After finding this load response, this theorem can be summarized as circuit can be analyzed with only one source of power at a time. The corresponding components voltage and current algebraically added to the find out what they will do with all the power source in effect. Simply for the calculation replace all the voltage source with wire and open all the current source. After completion of this session we learn about superposition theorem. We learn about the process for analyzing the circuit and also did a numerical practice. In upcoming video, we will learn about maximum power transfer theorem. We will solve the numerical based on maximum power transfer theorem. Stay tuned for upcoming video. Kindly do like, share and subscribe this channel. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thanks for watching.